Hey everyone, welcome to Deploying WSL in the Enterprise. I am Sohini Roy, Product Manager for Ubuntu on WSL. And I'm Hayden Barnes, Engineering Manager for Ubuntu on WSL. So we have seen a huge surge of interest in WSL by enterprises, including automakers, financial institutions, device makers, all since our last WSL Conf in March. And this tremendous growth is inspired by a lot of things, partly due to you, but two big things that contributed to this, WSL2, and then backporting WSL2 to existing versions of Windows. Together, it's unlocked new opportunities for enterprises to adopt WSL. And since March, we've received a ton of questions from all of you forward thinkers and explorers. You know, you tried WSL out and you loved it. Now you need help convincing the rest of your company or your administration to make WSL a no-brainer asset for your entire team. So today we're going to help you have those conversations with the people you work with, help you figure out where to go next in deploying WSL in the enterprise, and of course, uh, how you can lean on us. So with that, we know that in the end, everyone at your company really wants the same thing building great products that everyone loves and helps your business flourish. But sometimes we disagree on the best way to get there. In all of our interviews and discussions, we saw tension between the IT admin and the developer. And I'm sure many of you can guess why, but let's talk a bit about what drives that tension. There's always this tug of war and internal struggle to find that balance. Developers and IT admin clash because the modern agile developer needs to access open source development tools on Linux for fast paced development and strives to be at the forefront of innovation. But they need to do this all within the confines of their admin policy. Policies that are critical to minimize risk and provide reliable security and stability. So when it comes to deploying WSL in the enterprise, in working with Microsoft, we think we're able to provide the best of both worlds and achieve that balance. And that's exactly what Hayden and I are going to share with you today, how to get that Jedi level of balance for your business. In order to know how to keep those CTOs and those IT admins happy, let's quickly recap what's most important to them. What are enterprises' concerns when evaluating any software decision? and what will convince and drive their decisions. We see and hear enterprise decision makers looking at really three things, reducing costs, ensuring reliability, and maintaining security. And at some level, this has always been true. In fact, a coworker said these are the same things he's looking for in marriage. Not bad. But these are unprecedented times. The more and more we spoke with people, the more critical these three things just seem to become. And this is a quote from someone that we actually had the opportunity to speak with. Um, really the economics of open source and Linux and the Windows subsystem for Linux, it's helping this hospital system maintain their critical infrastructure, continue to develop and find cheaper alternatives so they can stay open and put their money where it matters most. So ultimately keeping costs down is what's gonna drive these decisions. They want to reduce large one-time purchases. They want predictable costs over the lifestyle, uh, life cycle of a product. Enterprise decision makers want software that has been tested. They want to know what they're buying and they want to know it's going to last. They want someone they can trust and can always call for every blip or moment of uncertainty. And ultimately, they want to minimize risk. It's important to adhere to internal compliance measures, especially since many policies may also be influenced by insurers or outside agencies. So Hayden, how are they finding this now? So these priorities from enter enterprise decision makers um, have been historically handled in the Microsoft and Linux ecosystems by locking things down um, for employees, devs, IT staff, sometimes to the point of absurdity. Um, next slide, there you go, thanks. Um, as Sohini discussed, uh, this frequently puts individual developers and IT staff at odds with those decision makers. Devs and IT staff want the latest open source tools. Um, they wanna use Linux, but 
but the CTO has to balance compliance uh, and budgetary concerns as well. They may have hundreds or thousands of perfectly usable Windows laptops or other devices running, um, not to mention a lot of institutional inertia around Microsoft infrastructure, uh, legacy software, existing Microsoft contracts, and organizational change takes time. Um, in some cases, there is Linux infrastructure, but it may be limited to server devices um, or is intended for distros that aren't supported on WSL. Um, but let's talk about how this actually works in practice. Um, in the Microsoft ecosystem, security and reliability are maintained with a combination of uh, tools um, that are built in. So Active Directory, uh, most people know for central identity management and authentication. Um, then on top of that, group policy to fine tune device security configuration. Um, and then SCCM and Intune to image and provision applications on individual devices. Um, that's usually built on top of Windows 10 Enterprise or LTSC or Windows Server to provide long-term device support. In the Linux ecosystem, uh, the security and reliability are maintained with a combination, um, usually some implementation of LDAP uh, for central identity management, um, and then tools such as satellite or landscape uh, to manage devices and configure security. Uh, then you have long-term stable releases of distros like Ubuntu and extended support through programs like Ubuntu Advantage. The good news is that in for an enterprise evaluating WSL uh, that has some of these is regardless of the combination they have, is they can leverage both of those to make WSL work for them. Um, so let's talk about why WSL would want, why enterprise would want WSL, and then we'll come back a little later about how we kind of make it all work together. Great. So why deploy it at all? You know, our community is growing. We've started to see patterns in where people are innovating the most through WSL. This might not be too big of a surprise, but, you know, the boundaries of what are achieved through WSL just continue to be expanded. That's why we love these conferences so much and honestly why we love open source. We love Linux because it's just easy to learn and adopt and innovate with one another. One another. So here's some of the biggest trends we've seen. One, you just saw data science, AIML workstations, but we'll get to that in a minute. We also saw a lot of companies that had a mix of Linux and Windows deployments. Some of them not only dual boot, but even have dual laptops, which is expensive and challenging to manage. They have legacy applications, special versions of CAD that require Linux and WSL, um, helps them consolidate and minimize those costs and complications. WSL is also helping to streamline development and deployment on public clouds like Azure for clean and easy work stream. Another huge trend, Kubernetes. When, uh, WSL makes it easier to access uh, Kubernetes, much easier than ever before. In fact, we did a demo earlier with our favorite WSL course here, Unio, my BFF, uh, on how we get Kubernetes up and running on WSL. It's fast, it's easy, it's highly interoperable. Be sure to check out the video. It's in our expo section. It's also on our YouTube channel. Don't miss it. Also, we just heard from the NVIDIA team, WSL users have been demanding GPU compute support uh, to speed up their ML training times. The preview opens the door for developers and data scientists to use NVIDIA's CUDA platform to just accelerate their training and enterprises can accelerate their AI to market and pass GPUs to your ML pipeline and components for that deep learning development and testing that you're looking for. And of course, if you missed the NVIDIA session, don't worry, it's all recorded. You can look at those demos over and over again um, and it'll all be on our YouTube channel soon. But now Hayden's gonna talk through some of the challenges for WSL specifically with the enterprise and how we can solve them. WSL is amazing. It fulfills many meaningful use cases for developers, IT staff, and it opens the door to Linux on Windows. Um, so what are some of the specific challenges we've encountered around WSL and how have we solved them? How do we balance the concerns of enterprise decision makers with getting devs and IT staff the latest open source tools? How do we make it work in these hybrid Microsoft Linux environments? Um, so there's three primary challenges. 
The first is integrating with existing infrastructure, such as authentication, VPN, network file shares. Uh, the next challenge is actually getting the WSL image onto Windows devices and then managing that environment. Um, finally, uh, we've heard from a lot of customers who want custom images, and that's customizing the WSL image they're deploying for their specific needs for their enterprise. Let's take a look at these one at a time. In terms of integrating with existing infrastructure, um, I've mentioned this before, this is often Microsoft, sometimes Linux, and increasingly both. Um, but for authentication, most of the time we're authenticating against Active Directory, uh, sometimes LDAP, and in other cases, uh, there's an LDAP Active Directory bridge uh, that we can authenticate against. Um, many enterprises also make use of a VPN, uh, I know Canonical does, that requires tweaking networking for WSL. Um, and then you also have the challenge of accessing network file shares in the WSL environment in an environment that doesn't have a super sophisticated in its system. So how do we, you know, we have to customize that for the clients, um, for enterprise uh, in that environment, at least for now. Um, then comes the practical aspect of getting images to devices. Um, many enterprise shops leverage some combination of SCCM or Intune. Um, with Intune, uh, Canonical can ship images uh, from our build system directly to workstations. Um, for others who use third-party endpoint solutions, uh, we can provide an Apex to be deployed there if it's supported, uh, things like Simnatech uh, and others. Uh, in isolated network environments, WSL distros can be delivered manually but then updated over the LAN with, by hosting the Apex with Microsoft App Installer. Then we get to customizing the Ubuntu image for specific workflows. Um, enterprise customers want an experience that just works out of the box for their users. Um, that can include the aforementioned network file sharing configuration. Sometimes it includes uh, X support out of the box. Um, support for legacy Linux applications. Uh, you'd be surprised uh, what old applications enterprise are still using, things that require libraries in Ubuntu 14.04, for example. Um, they also want to block unauthorized applications from running. Um, and one of the ways we deal with that challenge at Canonical is um, with landscape support to manage uh, security and software updates. So, so, go ahead. So, how do we do it? How do we at Canonical actually address some of those challenges? Hayden's mentioned a few of them, but I just want to recap. To get that perfect out of box experience for custom image, uh, we offer the custom images. It's just to make things really easy, take the hassle out of a lot of some of the hacking that folks have been doing to get some of the things that you want, um, and, and continue to. to uh, provide those legacy applications and make sure it's a really clean experience. And then with Ubuntu Advantage, you guys trusted long-term support or that's the LTS. Uh, you get that with Ubuntu Advantage, of course, out of the box, but then you can call support whenever you feel alone or uncertain with anything that's happening. Um, you get that extended security for minimal risk. And then landscape, as Hayden mentioned, will support you know and manage security and, and software updates. Um, as necessary. Kind of a final takeaway, if, if you're unfamiliar with Ubuntu Advantage, it's kind of our, our tried and true uh, offering here. We've been doing this for a while and we're trusted by some of the biggest players in the game. We're excited to bring the stubborn IT admins and the CTOs the same level of reliability that we're pretty much known for um, and that other people have really come to trust us with. So everything combined, you can achieve some pretty amazing things with this toolkit. Hopefully together, we can find that perfect balance. Um, and that, I think we're actually, we're, we're getting us back on schedule, which is fantastic. Um, Hayden, any, any closing remarks from you? Any, anything we should recap? Uh, no, just that we're able to address those enterprise priorities, you know, about security, reliability, saving costs, with Ubuntu on WSL in the enterprise um, and still give those devs and those IT staff what they need. 
Um, in some cases, it requires just a little ingenuity. Um, and you know, it's, it requires those custom images in some situations that we have to customize for the client. Um, but with new features coming down the line, like GUI support, audio support, the, the GPU compute, it's getting easier and it's just going to get easier. So we're really looking forward to kind of where this goes, not just where it is, but, but where it goes in the future. And ultimately, if you do have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, if you go to our expo or on the homepage, there's a little register interest button. Uh, that's to ask any of us questions. Also, one of our field engineers, David, is going to be here online all throughout session two. So he'll be there to answer your questions and figure out how to get set up with anything on WSL. He's a genius. Um, and we'll you know, we're, we're happy to support you guys as a team. So let us know how we can help you. Thanks for bringing the community together. Uh, we'll see you guys around.